Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about absolute value. We're going to explain what absolute value is, how to do some really introductory problems, and then also some sort of like the next level up. We're not doing the really complicated ones like with um, squares and factoring. We're just, this is a, just an introductory, what is absolute value? And let's do some introductory problems with it. So first off, Absolute value has a definition in the sense of what it means. And then there is sort of the real world application. So this is what it actually means. You're not really going to use this this much. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say we have a number line. Just a very basic, boring, la di da di da number line. I'm not going to write all the numbers because I value your time. And let's say I have the number three. How far away is that from zero? It is one, two, three steps from zero. Well, how about the number negative three? How far away is it from zero? It is also one, two, three, three steps from zero. That's what absolute value is. It is asking how many steps from zero is this number? Absolute value is represented as two vertical lines with the number in the middle. So the absolute value of three or how many steps from zero is three, just three. Likewise, if I asked you what is the absolute value of negative three, it's also three because as we said, it is also three steps away from zero. So that's the definition. Absolute value is how far away is the number from zero. In practical, real-world terms, what this means is if there's a number inside this absolute value, the answer is to make it positive. That's it. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've told students this and they look at me like, there must be something more. I'm like, there isn't. So what is the absolute value of negative 22? Make it positive. What's the absolute value of 10? It's already positive. Leave it alone. That's it. That's it. So if you were asked the absolute value of a number, it's just the positive version of that number. Now, again, in math books, they're going to present things in this very precise mathematical way, and it can be confusing. For example, absolute value is often presented thusly, where they say the absolute value of X is equal to, and they have a little fancy bracket, is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero, and a negative x if x is less than zero. You're like, but you just said just make it positive. That's what they're saying here too. That's all that means. It means if this number inside is greater than or equal to zero, hence zero or positive, just write the same number. So if this was 10, is 10 greater than or equal to zero? Yes, then just write 10. Well, what if it was negative 10? Is 10, negative 10 greater than or equal to zero? Nope. Is 10 less than zero? Yes. So write the opposite of it, the positive version. So a negative, negative 10 would be positive 10. This is saying in very fancy terms exactly what I just said. If it's positive, leave it positive. If it's negative, make it positive. That's it. Now, those are going to be the first problems you receive. A couple of things to watch out for. Beware of things when they do like this, like absolute, you know, negative absolute value of three. You're like, ah, oh, she said always make it positive. So I know the answer is positive three. I'm done. No, no, I'm afraid not. Because this part, absolute value of three is three. But this little negative is out here by itself. It's not part of it. It's outside the absolute value. So it just hangs out there. It's kind of like, it really is, saying negative one times the absolute value of three. So if you wrote it like that, negative one times the absolute value of three, absolute value of three is three, negative one times three is negative three. So the answer here would be negative three. Watch out for those. The other kind of problem you're likely to get when you first start using these is something like this. The absolute value of 4x 
plus 2 equals 14. Now, you're like, ah, how do I get the absolute value? Okay, well, it says to make it positive, so maybe I just make everything inside here negative and then I solve it? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> because what is this actually saying? Let's look at it a little simpler. Let's make it a little simpler inside the absolute value, and then you should see how we're going to move forward on this problem. What if I said just the absolute value of x is 14? What numbers, not one, what numbers could go in there to make this true? Well, you said if it was 14, it just stays the same. So x could be 14. Ah, but x could also be negative 14, and it would become 14 as well, because it's making it positive. So x could be 14, or it could be negative 14. The number inside here could be 14 or negative 14. So that means this represents the number inside here. It could be 14, or it could be negative 14. So the way you solve this is you do both. You set them both up and then you solve them both. So first, if you're on the left, 4x plus 2 equals 14. And over here on the right, 4x plus 2 equals negative 14. And you solve both of them. All right, on the left side, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and I get 4x equals 12. Then to get rid of this 4, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. 4x divided by 4 is just x, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Over on the right-hand problem, 4x plus 2 equals negative 14. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides again to get rid of that positive 2. I'm going to subtract the 2, and I get 4x equals negative 16. Negative 14 minus 2 is negative 16. Same thing here to get rid of that 4 times x. I'm going to divide by x, excuse me, divide by 4. And 4x divided by 4 is just x. And on the right, negative 16 divided by 4 is negative 4. So I have two answers, and you have to include both of them in order to get them right. So your answers are x equals 3 and x equals negative 4. The key with these is going to be that anything within the absolute value could be a positive or negative number, and you need to set up, when you're solving these equations, you need to set them up so it's equal to the positive and then also equal to the negative in order to solve them correctly. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.